So now that I've told you about reactive programming as a concept, and I've told you a little bit about Java completable futures, let's see how those things compare and contrast and can be used, completable futures can be used to implement reactive programming. So the Java completable futures framework maps onto these reactive programming principles as follows. So first one is responsiveness. So remember, we want to be responsive. We don't want to block things. We don't want to keep the user interface uh, code from being able to react to user events like touchscreen events or mouse events or GPS location signal events and so on. And the whole goal here is to avoid blocking the caller. Why do we want to do this? Whenever you block the caller, that will either underutilize the cores because you're chewing up a core that could be used for something else while you're blocking, imp thereby impeding the inherent parallelism on multi-core systems or systems with direct memory access. And it also can complicate program structure for a whole variety of reasons that we don't have time to talk about right now. So that's one of the problems. The way to get around this in the completable futures framework is to use things like factory methods to start things running in the background and arbitrary area methods, which can be used to wait for a whole bunch of things to finish running asynchronously. There's other things as well, but those are two of the, the key ones. So we can have the and completion stage methods. We can avoid blocking threads, which is the desired goal in reactive computing. There's also a quick assumption you need to be aware of. Reactive programming assumes that creating threads is expensive and therefore you want to limit the number of threads and you typically do that by having a pool of them like the common fork join pool, but not limited to the common fork join pool. Another goal is to avoid changing between thread contexts. So you might not want to have like a pipeline of threads that pass things back and forth to each other because you're going to end up with too much context switching overhead, too much synchronization overhead, too much memory and cache management overhead. My PhD dissertation from many, many years ago talks about a lot of this. It was a long time ago at this point, but you might want to take a look at that. It's kind of fun. And so there's all kinds of cool ways that you can avoid changing threads by using the completable futures framework. There's some really neat methods. There are these non-async methods. There's the Java, Java fork join pool. They all try to work very carefully to avoid having to change threads. Another important concept is resilience. So you want to make the methods that you write that run asynchronously resilient to failures. If anybody's ever seen Terminator 2, you know that the T-1000 uh, cyborg, Cyberdyne cyborg, is able to take lots of punishment and survive until he's put into a vat of like molten metal or something like that. So you want things to be resilient and be able to heal themselves. And the way this is done is by having a really cool model of exception propagation in asynchronous contexts, which is super duper cool. Keep in mind, by the way, completable futures run in a single process, not a cluster, just like parallel streams, same basic thing. Another theme is elasticity. You want the computations to run scalably in a pool of threads that are themselves mapped to a set of cores. Once again, much like with parallel streams, we can use the common fork join pool or other pools. That's the main difference between the completable futures framework and the parallel streams framework. Completable futures can run in any kind of pool of threads, whereas parallel streams has to run in the common fork join pool, unless you do crazy things. And then finally, the implementation of completable futures is indeed message driven. The programming interface is method driven. You program by making method calls. But if you were to peek under the, the skirts of the abstraction, as we will do later, you will see that the completable future framework is implemented by creating messages and then passing those messages around and ultimately having those messages stored and run in thread pools like the common fork join pool. And we'll take a look at that. So this allows you to get some of the benefits that you would expect with loosely coupled and isolated processing and so on using message passing in the implementation part. As I mentioned before, that's, that's a little bit different from, uh, it's a little bit different type of a principle than responsive, resilient, and elastic. Those are really quality attributes, whereas message driven is really an implementation detail that can be used to achieve other quality attributes like isolation, loose coupling. And if we start programming with modern, modern frameworks for doing web programming like Spring, then you really can, in fact, start to program in a way where calls run in different processes in different computers by using the magic of asynchronous processing. We will 
not really cover that in this course. I'll, I'll mention it a little bit more later, but the course next semester will go into much more detail about that. So if this is interesting to you, feel free to take that course. Okay, so that is basically the mapping of completable future features onto reactive programming principles. Next time I will also go through a more comprehensive comparison that walks through all the different Java programming paradigms ranging from the original object-oriented model where you only had one return value that was running synchronously, that's the classic object-oriented approach, to the parallel streams approach where you can have a stream of things that run typically synchronously with parallel processing with common fork joint pool to reactive programming with completable futures in conjunction with parallel streams and then to the pinnacle, which always occurs in the upper right hand quadrant of any chart, which is the reactive streams model. And that's where we're going to head to next. But for now, we're going to talk about completable futures.